into erotic wisdom with Mrs. Love. So here we are again with another episode of Erotic Wisdom and today we come in live from Ubud in Bali and I'm sitting with an architect. <laughs> <laughs> of course, a wild woman. <laughs> that is also a creatrix of beautiful uh, houses and uh, places for living and loving. And um, her name is Alejandra. I'm Alejandra. And your surname? Cisnero. Cisnero. And Alejandra has been living in Bali for? 17 years. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm getting chills right now because uh, this is, I'm very, I'm really touched and moved that we can explore. You know, I really enjoy taking a deep look, you know, at, at life. I and know. So, That's why I like you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's do some deep uh, scuba diving into, you know, these houses. I'm yes. delighted. You're you yes. know, absolutely the person. <laughs> so I'll tell you just for the one listening the way I came across Alejandra basically I'm living in one of her houses I found it on Airbnb I came to spend um, three days because I was running a course called Kissing the Snake three days back to back and I wanted a beautiful place that could nourish me while I'm teaching and of course I found this juggler fantastic and I came for three days with my daughter Luna and we're still here <laughs> <laughs> Two months later, <laughs> I couldn't leave. I just couldn't get myself to leave. And I had just booked another house in Ubud, and I didn't care. I just went back, got my bag, and just stayed here. And now we're leaving Ubud in three days. So uh, this has been really the place that held my heart for the last two months of me living in Bali. And, and I fell in love, you know, I was telling Alejandra, I thought I was coming. I had this fantasy that maybe in Bali I would find a lover. And of course they didn't specify with the universe in what <laughs> form. <laughs> so I'd imagine maybe it was in a human form, but actually it turns out that it was in the form of a living abroad. And is this juggler has been really a love affair for me. And when I was in Cape Town, I kept saying that I wanted to, in Bali, I wanted to find a house. I wanted to live in a house without walls. Oh, really? You I actually did. said that? I well, the universe that. absolutely gave you that. You know, I didn't know about this juggler. It was more like an idea because I remember it's so hot. You can live outside a lot. And here I am living in a house without walls. And uh, it's like a dream coming true. And you, Alejandra, you living in the joglo in front of it, and you are the builder of this house. And I thought, wow, what an amazing opportunity to have a deep dive and talk about love affair with living space. You know, how I, in my experience living here has been of an expansion, like my body feels happy when I move in this space, when I see the light of the day is changing in front of me, I see the rice field, I arrived, the rice field in front of my lounge was super green and then became a little bit yellow and then now there is no more rice field because the rice has been harvested and now it's full of uh, brown uh, stomp with mud which fits perfectly the brown ducks. Exactly, <laughs> and the ducks that are here now for the next episode. Yeah. And the next uh, progression, yeah. So you really, I feel this experience of living here has been stylized. And, uh, and, and what I bring home with me, it's really this idea of this green ocean. Living here, for me, has been living by the ocean. How beautiful. Which is not blue, it's been a mm. green ocean, which happened to be the color of the heart. Uh -huh. And so it uh -huh. really it? Okay. brought a lot of peace in my, in my being. And uh, I want to just throw something at you now yeah. because you have published a beautiful book called Seen and Unseen that speaks about all the joglo that you've been building in Bali. And in one of them you speak that uh, 
um, your joy is, is to know that people have a beautiful life. I don't know how it was written, but also there are kiss being stolen in the corner of your houses. And that really touched me. Uh, uh, <laughs> exactly, the kisses, right? The kisses. A moment for a furtive kiss. The moment a for secret. a furtive kiss. Exactly, right? Well, we, you know, you're Italian, I'm Latin, you know, it's just like, wow, that is, that says it all, you know? A place where you We think can... we live in houses and people look at the kitchen, <laughs> if you have an oven, and where are you going to put the couch? But what about kissing? And loving each other and having, you know, creating space for love to unravel and unfold and express. Yeah, yeah. And I feel your houses are really romantic. They inspire romance. Yeah. Thank you. I had a, a, one of my clients, a Balinese boy, you know, he said, you know, oh, because he was the manager for one of the other joglos. And he said to me, uh, and then he decided he actually saved money to be able to build his own joglo as a Balinese person, which is already extraordinary. And he said to me, you know, I just, I have a fantasy about these conversations that I'm going to have around the island in the kitchen. Yeah. And I thought, that's it. Yeah. It's really, it's all of those kind of dreams. It's all of our dreams that yeah. we have that, that should be, they should be nurtured and they should expand i mean we you know yeah, we should like be surprised building at what house, could happen yeah building a house to support the dream instead of building a house and then put a human being inside yeah. is the opposite letting the human being expand and then the house becomes just to support our love affair and our dream so tell me about your love affair with joglo how, well, how did it started for you or, or what do well, you love so about I, it well I was, I actually, I, so I woke up this morning kind of thinking, you know, what, because I really wasn't thinking about our conversation until this morning. And then I thought, well, you know, what is it about the houses? And one of, there's a number of things we can get into, but one of the things is this scene unseen. Yes. You know, really, what is scene unseen? It's the male and the female. Yeah. It is exactly that, you know? And I call, one of the other things that I, words that I use a lot for my house is, and in fact, years ago, you know, in, in when I was in California, I had a class that was called Designing Your Own Home, The Poetic and the Practical. Yes. And it's that, it's that tension, you know? That's what these houses are. Unfortunately, most houses, unfortunately, really unfortunately, have been designed by men that yeah. we've all lived in and still and i don't know practical. why of, yeah exactly there's a a kind of a heavy you know kind of a dose of the nothing wrong with it uh but you know when you add in the poetic on this other side you know and and the place for dreaming and for yeah. looking at the moon yes and and for crying you know and having your yeah. sad moments too yeah um so that part of it and then how did all of this happen i mean i was uh i also i came to bali like you did and i well, after i was here for two weeks i de decided i was going to move here you know i quietly went back to the u.s and i packed everything up i you know i, I didn't tell anyone uh -huh. it was a little bit before email you know yes. and i thought you know you <laughs> <laughs> better not say too much because again yes. that's also it's a little bit my philosophy uh about seen and seen but also a little bit how i have operated in my life that has really served me well you know the things that are really very very important to us we don't talk about them too much i like that i that's love so it i think it's powerful the yeah. balinese are that way yeah you know they're like I, you know, I don't know if we can talk about that. We don't need to. Yes. Um, and so I, when I came to Bali, I thought, oh, okay, maybe it's not going to work and maybe I'm going to go back. Yeah. But more, even more importantly, I think there was this, you know, this seed that I was protecting and that I wanted to grow and that I needed to, you know, basically incubate it yeah. in a very, very protected way. So... 
So yeah, so I came to Bali and you know, immediately like you, I was I felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every day I felt so good. good and better, you know? Yeah. Like one month in Bali was like, you know, 10 years of therapy yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Deep heart medicine. And actually, it's funny because I before I moved here, I came on a short trip with a friend of mine. And I found a little journal that I had made from that very first trip, uh -huh. you know? And one of the things I wrote on it was, I just had my first outdoor shower in an outdoor bathroom, you know, and I yeah. said, this is, you know, this has changed my life. Yeah. That, so, you know, these small things yeah. that. Um, and I want to add that when I sit in the bathroom here, I mean, for the people that are listening right now, we are sitting, of course, in the joglo called Jasmine. And in the bathroom here, I, when I sit on the toilet, I can look at the moon. Exactly. <laughs> How poetic is that? I know. I mean, that's really life expensive that we are constantly connected with nature. Nothing, it's secretive, you know, that my living experience, it's also an offering mm -hmm. to the rhythm of life, to the season, to the day and the night and the changing of the season. And when the rain comes, it's been raining heavily for the past few days, it rains inside the bathroom. It's like the shower is on. Exactly. And it's beautiful. You <laughs> feel the wet, you know. You still go, you sit on the toilet. It doesn't rain on the toilet. But you feel the rain. You can smell it. You yeah. can touch it. It's right here. It's not outside, over there, far away. Yeah, yeah. And because we live in the tropic, there's nothing more beautiful than know that the rain comes but we're not cold, it's not cold. Yeah, so I think that what you just brought up is part of it, you know? So I arrived to Bali, I was felt so nurtured by the Balinese and the island already. And then I, and in a way, I think it's just naturally, like many people who end up here, maybe I didn't really think about it, but it's like, oh, this is an interesting place, you know, to, to experiment mm. with maybe pushing a little bit the boundaries of what we can do yeah because it's it feels so gentle yeah and it is I mean it doesn't just feel gentle yeah. it actually is gentle yeah. you know I've of for of those place. of us who've lived in countries that can be dangerous yeah. you know Argentina is it used to be a very safe country when I grew up but now it's you know you can't yeah. You know, they look at uh, my photos. Ay, ale, you know, it, no podemos hacer eso nunca. We can never do that in Argentina now. Yeah. You know, but um, but here we still can. And so in a way to appreciate this moment and place in time. Yeah. Right. And really say, OK, what is the minimum? I mean, what do we really need? You know, and uh, so that was part of it. When I first arrived, I didn't build immediately because I really wanted to get a sense of what did I want to do, yeah. you know? Was I going to build something new? Um, you know, how do you deal with the rain and lots of, and the tropics and the animals? It's completely different. I yeah. was coming from a place with, which is a desert. Yeah. A little bit like, you know, sort of semi-arid California. Yeah. You know, so all of the issues are completely different and I didn't really think it was responsible you know to jump in you know and until I really got a sense of all of this very profound you know kind of nature that we have here um, and so I you know at a certain point I, I found these they were a few of them here in Bali these are actually called joglos the first one that I saw and they're from the island of Java. And they became fashionable with a particular, you know, regency of a, a king. And he would put them, you know, inside the palace. Um, and it was a place of, meant to be a place of contemplation. No construction. Later on, you could have, a, you could have an interesting discussion there. And, and then it was, and it was copied, you know, so people who had money would build this kind of joglo pavilion. You know, so if the juggle is basically a pavilion. It's a, a pavilion. A platform as a base and four columns and a roof. Exactly. Later on, people would close them, 
you know, it's it basically it can have it can just have this this um, center area, but also sometimes um, there are other columns uh, that go all the way around, and so then you have a larger larger one. Yeah, and so. Um, but this is that's the end of it right there. Yeah, and so that would have a roof, you know, around it, but not meant to have any walls. Yeah. However, p later on, of course, people had this roof, so they ended up closing it. Yeah, it is, but it's not really an easy. It's not really easy to make livable for yeah. people, and they don't like it, you know. Yeah. and the wood is, you know. So I thought, wow, when I found the first one. The wood is about 120 years old. It's teak. It's so hard. It's like it's like stone. The teak, and it's all you can see the marks of the knives hand hewn, and wow. I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like already. poetry it's already. Poetry. It's already you know. And you all don't the need conversation it. that have happened inside these spaces also community conversation. Yeah. yeah well, nothing else. You don't need anything else. Yeah. I mean, really, you don't. You need nothing else. So you know, once you put it, and I know that already. So I thought, you know, what you, you know, we have to honor this. You know, this, this, the wood, honor. You know, this, this pavilion, and you know, and also, um, you know, in the U.S. We have barns in the East Coast. Mm. Uh, and also this sort of these loft spaces yeah. in New York City, yeah. which I've always found wonderful. Yeah, that me kind too. of industrial the warehouse. Yeah, yeah, the warehouse. You know, <laughs> but when you when you if you live in the country, you have warehouses. Yeah, but in the countryside, there's no there's no warehouse really. Yeah. So I was kind of like, well, oh, you know, this might end up being a bit like a warehouse, yeah. a bit like a like a barn. Yeah. Right, and so yeah, I just I started. I really put, did the minimum, you know. It's just like okay, we're gonna put it up, and then of course we have this thing here in Bali that is the best in the whole world are the craftspeople who make the the alang alang the grass roof. Mm. Nowhere in the world do they make a grass roof that is as beautiful as this one. Yeah. So really, you know, once I had <laughs> those two elements. Yeah. What else did I need? You know, that was it. Yeah. So everything else was really just about not going overboard, you know, trying to sort of control myself to make sure that I didn't have too many walls. Yeah. You know, that I didn't enclose it too much. So I, you know, you have to have some practical aspects. So, so you know, you have to have some walls where you can put plumbing, other walls where you have electricity and the minimum, you know, and and then at the very end, the workers kept saying to me, Ale, when are you going to put the doors in? <laughs> when are you going to put? They were really worried. Men, of course. <laughs> boys. Practical. The boys have, they generally, <laughs> they're very worried about us girls living, you know, <sighs> like this. Uh, they feel for them it's a burden, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, no, I have to worry about her yeah. in an open house, you know. Yeah. But I said to them, look, I'm gonna, I'll do it later, you know. I promise. I don't really have money right now. They understood that. It wasn't. It was partially true. And I thought later on we can always put in walls. Later on we can always put in also boundary walls. Yeah. You know, we can do all of those things. There's plenty of time. But the reality is, you know, you that you, you never you, did. You, you, you don't want to. <laughs> Once you leave in the house without a door, yeah. why would you want to put one again? You know, it's one. It's a kind of a silly, you know, addition that that takes up time. You know, here it's just it's, it's there. Yeah. I mean, one of the best um, 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 moments I'm having here is when I go for walk or I go for the shop and I just go. I close the bedroom. <laughs> there is only a door here in the bedroom. The, in the bedroom has wall. But I walk and also last night we were walking back. When you arrive home, I'm already arriving into my lounge. <laughs> I don't have to open the gate. I don't have to um, walk towards the house, open the main. I don't have to carry keys. I don't have to find the keyhole. I don't have to <laughs> enter to this little door. There is a, 
a feeling of majestic yeah. also. I, I stepped in the temple of my living. It felt like this last night. And we left the door, the light on, so that already when you're walking close to the house from the distance, you see the temple illuminated. And I know that's my home. And I, I cannot tell you how poetic and delightful and romantic and exciting that has been for <laughs> no. me, especially living in South Africa. In two days, I'm coming back in a country where a house like this would be inconceivable yeah. because everything would be stolen. There is a lot of crime and petty crime. They would steal the couches, the table, the plates, the pots, yeah. you know, and, and, in, and here to come home and find everything in place that no one would dare touch anything here. It's really, really special. Yeah, yeah. But I want to ask you to tell me a little bit about this uh, um, Sekala and Niskala, yeah. seen and unseen in the Balinese tradition. Yeah. Well, that, you know, that is what it's one of the most important elements of, of their philosophy. And it's the idea that you, you know, that you do that what is important is not what is seen, mm. you know. What is seen is, you know, it's one level, but there's an, an entire universe, and it's the important one that is the unseen mm. universe. Yeah. And they, the problem with uh, talking about it is you're not supposed to talk about it, you know? It's, it's like spoken so, and unspoken. Yeah, it, it needs to be, an un, it's an, also an unspoken world. So uh, there are special days that honor those, uh, those, that unspoken world, the unseen, and you're not supposed to even mention that it's that day. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's just different layers. And I, I, I love that because it, what it means is uh, words are, are not enough, really. You yeah. know, it, it's kind of, it's, it, it transcends language. Yeah. It's beyond language, this other world. And of course, it, it includes nature, you know, uh, and wood, a wood post as well. Yeah. That has his own life and his own spirit. And I was reading up that in the architectural tradition of Bali, they give offering to every pillar that they build. The, f the first pillar, the, the, the base structure of the house, there is a whole ceremony around it. And also that the architecture of the house follow the measurement of the yeah. owner of the house, I the physical exactly. measurement. Hey? Found that so creative and inclusive. Well, you know, the, the, the measuring system that is still used in the United States is feet. True. Right? And people, people say, oh, it's so archaic. But you know what? I actually, because I was trained in the U.S., in architecture, I use feet in my head, you know, whatever you use. And I find it because it is based on, you know, it's, it's based on a human foot. Yeah. yeah. I f you know, I, for me, meters, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That's you know, true. what, what, you know, if you talk about 500 meters, you have to kind of, in your head, or 50 meters, or 5 meters, or 0.5 meters, there's no kind of image of what that is. Yeah, you know, and so I think um, I have it with the people, not, not the builders so much, uh, but some of the, the people who do my drawing, the art, my architectural drawings, you know, he's, he's always working in meters, you know, and, and, you know, he just, he doesn't, there's no nuance in the meters like you have when you're, like the there's Balinese no human do, reference. when you yeah. have a human reference, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw this in the in the spiritual tradition. They put uh, humanity at the center of the of the experience of reality. And uh, I was reading up in in, in this beautiful book, uh, Sikala and Niskala. Um, I'm bringing it up because Alejandra's book about her juggle is also called Seen and Unseen. Yeah. And also the house has wall and it hasn't. Some are hiding and some are revealing. So the house reveal what generally is unseen, the inside of the house. And 
So for me, your job was our revelation also of intimate life, like we were mm. seeing, the romance and the, <laughs> the privacy that we tend to keep behind closed door. And now when I live in your house, there is no privacy. And that's also beautiful. I noticed the, the tension at the beginning, but after a while in my body, I relax because what do I have to hide? I'm a human being. I do think, yes, yeah, someone is looking in, I'm reading, I'm washing the dishes, I am talking to someone, and there's nothing to be hidden, <laughs> actually. It's a social relation. But we grow up in structures that are so separate. They separate us from our neighbor. And so, yeah, like I'm having a private conversation. You can't see. Why not? Let's see. Let's make it public. You know, we're all doing the same thing inside our houses. So, and I think this also the aspect that really uh, relaxed me in my body, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. even my domestic gesture become har harmonized mm. with nature, the dark outside. There is no outside. We are all at the s in the same plane now. Yeah. And people that are walking in and out, you know, there is the passage because not only Alejandro to follow up on your story, you never added the door, but you never added boundary walls, <laughs> which is also <laughs> really beautiful. <laughs> so. There is a little uh, uh, passage behind my house, which is a public um, walk away. Yeah. And people <laughs> walk, not a lot of people. And I notice that when they walk, the house is almost so open that no one even looking. It's the opposite. When there is a house that is so heavily protected with boundary, we tend to look because we want to see what is not being revealed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we spying <laughs> on them because there is a wall, it's a private property. And I notice on the job, like, when people walk by, they almost look away. <laughs> they notice he's so naked, he's so exposed, then they feel shy to look too much. It's bizarre, That's the human nice. behavior. It's really interesting that you're saying that. I've never thought about that, but you're right. It's so true. Like, like they have to be respectful, you know, of what, of, and like they are, oh, and you become aware that this is a private home. And so you sort of have to jump to respectfulness for that. Yes. You know, instead of, and you, you a little bit have to be on a higher level, you know, than you maybe you would be if you were just walking by a place that was closed, you know? Yes, you have to be, you suddenly become aware. There is life happening and he awakes. And this the neighbor told me because Michael, one day I invited him inside and I said, you've seen the juggling. It's like, actually not so much because every time I walk, <laughs> it is so exposed that I tend to look away. I don't want to disturb. <laughs> and the other house that have, have more of walls, there is more curiosity and we spy through the cracks more. You, And for me, this is so interesting about human nature that also we want to protect ourselves and so we put wall to separate each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. But we evoke more desire to break the wall. And when there is no wall, there is no need to protect because respect arises naturally. People become respectful. There is no wall, so I'm lowering my voice. <laughs> <to be respectful. laughs> so it no, calls for nice. the mass of our humanity naturally. Mm -hmm. th this is really powerful, mm -hmm. something we don't explore when we separate. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is so interesting. I've never thought of it exactly like that, but you're absolutely right, you know? People are called, and, and, and perhaps there is the calling to live at, in a way at, your, at a higher level in a house that has less, also, um, yeah, that is more, more, more kind of pared down, yeah. right? You have to be you're reminded, you know, to be, you know, to be your higher self, okay, because it's gonna be, now it's gonna be cold, now it's gonna be warm. You you have to be aware, you know? Yeah, you have to be more aware. And I notice also when I live inside that I I greet the people passing, which originally I thought, oh, I don't wanna be disturbed by people walking by. And now it's the opposite when if I'm <laughs> sitting and doing something, washing the dishes and someone walk by, 
I am the first one that greets them always. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's so lovely. It reminds me that I'm a human and I live with other human. And you also speak about this in your book. That the Balinese is the relationship with human with other human, mm -hmm. human with nature, yeah. and human with spirit. Oh, but isn't that so beautiful? That's yeah. the basis. Yeah. 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 They um Yeah, they don't they don't really talk about it so much, but you can see it, you know, you can feel that in the their they this in their daily life, every day, you know, it's just, it's a combination of the three. Yeah. And also I was reading about, you know, they have this tree, always this rhythm of tree and the demons, they're living in the underworld at the, at the ground level mm -hmm. and at the top level on top of the mountain in the sky, there are the gods. And in between there is all of us, mm -hmm. in the human. And our purpose is to balance, um, gods and demons and not to overcome so you know i i grew up in italy so we have christianity and in christianity the light must overcome mm. we must control and overcome the demons the darkness and in the balinese culture no you don't overcome at all you have to keep balance even if it's too much of the goodness and the gods that's our balance, actually. You exactly. have to have some demons. Exactly. You have to feed the demons yes, a little you do. bit. You have to serve the demons. You yes, have to you give do. them a space. <laughs> I love that. I <laughs> know. So I know. It's a special you, day, yes. you know, where you have to offer them some cigarettes and chocolates and whatever <laughs> it is they like. Exactly. And in, in living in this house that you built, for me, is like giving space to the animal. It's full of geckos on the roof. And they poo on the couch. They make very solid poo, but sometimes you find them. I just flick them. You are aware <laughs> they are the animal. And I found frogs walking and through the ba from the bathroom to the front. Surprisingly, not so many ants. No. Not so many spiders at all. I haven't met snake yet. Sometimes I just assume that there are snakes, yeah. of course. But it allows for also all of this, the animal kingdom, to live together with me in this juggle. It's not just mine, separated, <laughs> you know? It's like living in a tree house. Oh, exactly. Well, and now the ducks are there. Now you the know, ducks and they, are And the ducks have garden. their job. You know, they're there for a couple of weeks, and they will be eating the little, the leftover seeds that were, you know, that were dropped in the harvest. And then also they poop in you know in the mud and that that's part of that's a fertilizer for the new rice for the new grow. rice yeah so this house really has its its sweetness instead of having the big scrap plasma tv screen in the lounge exactly. we are having a rice field and we watch at the rhythm of nature it's, it's yeah wonderful. i mean i can't imagine why would anyone do anything else you know yes like, also some of it is just it's, you know, it's easy. I mean, I didn't, to me, I just, I, I never thought twice because the rice are so beautiful. Yeah. Number one. Number two, um, you don't have to do anything. You know, it's taken, it's taken care of by people who are tending it every day. Yeah. yeah. And who yeah. love it and, and it's their livelihood. Yeah. Um, and then three, it's a changing tableau, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's like performance art, you know? Exactly. Oh, you know, and today, actually, I like this version, too, because the rice gets so tall. Yes. You know, we can't see across for a while. And then all of a sudden, it's cut back, and it looks like something from a, a Bruegel, you know, painting or something, yes. you know, admittedly. And... Um, a middle like age painting. Middle age painting. It's got that element the of, of yeah, the, the dying and the mud, but now the white duck are coming in. And and all of a sudden it's wide open too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and then the same every color of the roof. Month. It's got the same color of the roof of the juggler now. That is really true. That is yeah. Yeah, yeah super beautiful. Wow, so 
anything else that you want to share about your intimate um, relationship with this living? Mm, let me just see, because I was thinking about it earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, they're really their vessels. They're vessels that allow whatever we want, you know? They, they, and they, I like the fact that it's not really just meant for a certain you know, green person or a certain evolved person or a certain yoga person. Mm. No, it, it's for everybody, Yeah, you know? If you are an 80-year-old Korean woman, you should feel comfortable here. Um, families, anybody. Yeah, and in fact, the people who are most surprised, you know, those are for them. You know, they really have a tra a dramatic experience. Uh, experience. You know, people who are coming from Seoul, Korea, and yeah. they've lived in a, a tower their whole life, and they come and they say, you know, it reminds me of one time when I went to visit my grandparents in the countryside. So that it's lovely, you know, and yeah. also the fact. Yeah, this is this is Asia, you know, and poor Asia, they 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 don't have much of this. They have the opposite of a joglo. Yeah, you know, they have exactly they everybody has been going in the wrong direction. Well, yeah. they don't think it's the wrong direction, but some of them are waking up, and you know, so many towers built so quickly. Yeah, and so much hard work um, that they this is really a nice kind of antidote to yeah, that poetically even. yeah um and and i mean i have i have some indonesian clients and uh now we're gonna have a cooking show here as soon as you leave oh uh, really yeah uh javanese like a netflix tv show oh wow but and what i like about that is like the indonesians you know i'm not i am not indonesian i'm uh, argentine american cuban but it, to me, it's, it's a, uh, I feel it's a great honor that they feel that my interpretation of their joglos yes. Right? Yes. works and they, f and they yes. want to use it. Yes, that's beautiful. So eh? I, I like that because we have to remember, I don't want to, you know, we have to remember where we are. Yes. I mean, it's their country. Yes, we are guests. Right? So, I mean, that's wonderful when that can, when it works uh, uh, for the Indonesians and for the Asians in general. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I think it, I think we've really talked about almost everything. But just, you and know. I wanna ask you a question that sometimes I ask on my, um, and my the guests in this podcast okay. that is uh, I used to listen to a nighttime talk shows when I was young in okay. Italy on late night TV at midnight okay. and the interviewer always ended with this question <laughs> I really I thought it was so poetic because <laughs> speaking about poetry okay, okay. and seen and unseen so it's life a dream for you yeah it's life a dream or dream helps you to live better Life is a dream. Life is a dream. Yeah. yeah and what are dreams? Dream. When you dream at night, what's happening? Oh my God! My, I have, I have a whole entire talk about scene and scene. You know, such vivid dreams in these houses in Bali. Me too. Oh my God! I mean, <laughs> no shortage of activity going on. Um. I mean, I'm all over the world. I'm traveling around, after after traveling left and right. Um, yeah, uh, I think yeah, I am more of the belief that this is a this life is a dream, mm. you know. And, and who's the dreamer? And uh, who's dreaming? Well, we, you know, we're all we're all dreaming, mm. but you know, but we can. Uh, we can certainly uh, pull out. We can. We can. We can change our dream. 
I think we have the ability to mm. really make up, especially in a place like Bali, you know, it, it's a bit like, I've always, I felt like this from the beginning, and it's, I think it's really true, that it's like a, you enter into a different, por through a portal. Yeah. I mean, if there was a place that you could say we've all, maybe we all died and we all came to heaven yeah. here in Bali, yeah. it could be. It could be. And so far, you know, we just, we have to really enjoy and appreciate it because, you know, our experience in heaven, we may have to kind of reincarnate and go back again. Yeah. But it's so different from so many other places in the world. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Life in Bali is like a dream. Yeah. It's got this etheric quality that is, there is a lot of the unseen. It's not so solid and... Um, it, but, yeah. but I would like also to wrap up this beautiful time. Thank you for, for being available to me. And, and normally we talk about consciousness and sexuality. And I thought, no, we have to talk about this house. <laughs> Please be my guest. Um, but I want to speak about this event that happened like a couple of months ago when I just arrived here because uh, it was August. And in South Africa, Women's Day happened in August. And there was one night that I was at doing a webinar with about 40, 50 people, women online. You were here. I was here okay. at two o'clock at night, remember? Yeah. I always said, because, you know, with the difference of time from South Africa, I end up being in this juggler, sitting in the lounge with no wall, talking online late at night. So it was two in the morning when I finished the call and I was so high because it was beautiful with all these women. We talk about, you know, women's study and women's sexuality. And then I heard this banging noise in the middle of the night and I thought, oh, well, it must be a sculpture or an artist. You know, there were a sculpture down the river and I thought there is so much activity in Bali. It, you know, it's full of surprise, this place. So I didn't think too much of it and I went to bed. And the next morning you told me, I hope you didn't get disturbed by the banging noise in the middle of the night. <laughs> Oh, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> and I said, no, but I disturbed not. I was awake. Did you hear me? I hope I didn't disturb you by being awake. And he said, oh, no, I didn't hear you at all. But in the middle of the night, the family, the Balinese family, Bal Balinese family that own this rice field that we are all on it, that you're leasing this land from. So it's like our local caretaker. There, there was a bird of a baby girl, and I remember seeing the lady pregnant. And so in the middle of the night, they were burying the placenta <laughs> in the foundation of the house, because this is the Balinese tradition. And that was the banging noise that we all, and I thought that was so auspicious for the call I just had with all these women. And there you go, another woman here in Bali, speaking about dream and creating parallel reality she gave birth to a baby girl exactly. which unfortunately for bali is not so auspicious because in their tradition it, they can only pass the inheritance on to the male born but for us was so auspicious for us women and so a baby girl was born in that night while i was online in this beautiful poetic as I, I felt amazing. that moment was so poetic it really uh, filled my heart with happy tears <laughs> oh yeah. that's so beautiful and the grandmother you know she was able then because they all know you know that I'm the big champion of all the women and I love you know I'm forever talking about how amazing the girls are and how happy the the fathers have to, you know, should be, you know, yeah. because this beautiful baby girl has just been born. Yeah. So Ilu, the, the, who I know very well, the wife of the owner of the land, uh, you know, the next morning when I came over, she said, you know, Ali, and she was just, she, she, she felt, I think because I was there, she sort of felt she could make an announcement. She said, I am absolutely thrilled to have my granddaughter a girl oh, she said so i have had these boys around me all this time in my life 
and she is so beautiful and oh, i you know but fantastic. it was uh, it was so lovely you know and it's and you know it 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 is for them it's you know a step you know perhaps maybe even five years ago she wouldn't have said anything exactly Exactly. But but she, you know, this is sort of gigantic that she yeah. feels, and everybody, they all, you know, and the father, the grandfather, he was a little bit like, you know, is he, I, I was reading him, I wanted yeah. to know, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is Kadek feeling, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think he's, you know, he's doing well. I saw, I have a photo of him with his granddaughter. Of course. Oh, my God. It's just, just, of course, he's going to adore her. Yeah, of course. And it's so beautiful how we, you know, your presence here also so influenced them. And as you're speaking, I'm thinking, because I know the house behind here, it's their property. They build it, the house yeah. where Michael said. And also it's pretty much with little walls. He was inspired. He was inspired by you. Hey? Yes, I can he was. see that now. He only built the wall in the two bedroom. Exactly. And then the lounge and everything else is open and he built a beautiful garden so there is privacy given by plan. Exactly. But no fences. Exactly. And I'm realizing now that you have inspired them. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a give and take. Yeah. We receive from them and we give back and it's beautiful that yeah, yeah they receive it. It really, yeah, it really is. We were yeah. also fortunate to, you know, have this dream moment, this life uh, that actually has brought us here too. And we, this is a collective dream it that really we are dreaming is. together. It is. Yeah. Well, and you know, no one comes to Bali only once, so you and Luna will yeah. be back. You know that. Everybody yeah. has already told you that. Oh, yes. Well it's, well, it's our second time already. Oh, it is your second yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we say there, is, there isn't a two without a three. So, and, of exactly. course, in Balinese order, exactly. we have to come for our third time. Yes, exactly. So we'll see. And I'm also speaking with Luna. I wonder how living like this has inspired her being 12. It's been a beautiful initiation journey also for me as a mom. You know, I turned 50 and she's about to turn 13. So I'm doing the menopause. When is she turning 13? In January. Oh, fantastic. So it's soon, only a few months. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing the menopause and she's doing the puberty. And we had this journey together. And I'm curious to see how she's going to choose to live her life as an adult one day. And I'm wondering if she's going to live in, in Asia, in, in this life where we, we are at one with nature and the temperature is so beautiful. You know, we don't need wool also to protect the temperature of the house. It's never cold yeah. that we need to protect or too hot to having the needs of the aircon. You know, yeah. also find that here and you build it so well with the rhythm of the sun and the roof it's so high i have never been hot in this house <laughs> like in other house in bali that you're sweating in the day yeah. there's always a coolness about it and a breeze and uh, yeah it's really impeccable so well i have loved meeting you both and i'm very excited i'm gonna be i'm a big fan of luna <laughs> uh, I'm very interested to see, you know, what life, you know, is she yeah. going to yeah. craft and she's, an, I mean, we know she's an artist, but which direction yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that going to take? She's listening. No, and we did say next time we'll come back, she can do some apprenticeship with you. Definitely. We we'll definitely designer. do that. We'll, yeah. we'll set that up for, yeah. for sure. So thank you so much and I'm going to say suksuma in ah, Balinese suksuma. and for the people that are listening I think once we're going to publish this episode we're going to also put it onto YouTube and um, Alejandra agreed to give me some beautiful picture yeah. of all her jugglers she exactly. built many yeah. now of course like everybody that lives in one if you're going to have a house, it's going to ask Alejandra to build you one. <laughs> like, I'm waiting to know where I want my juggle in the world. <laughs> but I'm going to invite you there to please build one for me because I, I don't want to have a, a different home. And, and so she built many. And so she's going to give me picture for all the um, 
this beautiful poetry of leaving that she built and we're going to do a slideshow yeah, on exactly, YouTube. So exactly. if you're listening to this now on any of the platform like Spotify or Anchor, you know that you can also find it on YouTube and see the photograph of this uh, living art uh, performances. And, um, and then I'm going to put a link for Airbnb. You can come and live in exactly. these houses you can in Bali stay. if you come to a boot exactly. and uh, you can find them in Airbnb. So I'm going to put all your link at the end. Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. And now uh, Bali is opening up again. Bali is opening exactly. up. As, I, as per this day, exactly. two days ago, the business visa is open business again. Business visas Social are going to be open available again. again. It's so a really great time to come. Yeah, because the Balinese have been holding out, you know, yeah. like everybody in the world, but yeah. also the Balinese. And yeah. so, yeah, this would be a nice So I'm going to put this link with a little bit of tension. It's exactly. like we spoke about this tension of one displaced to be seen, but also not too much because <laughs> not, then I know it's available for me when I come back. <laughs> Otherwise, if it's too popular, we'll be booked out all the time. <laughs> no, it's always going to be available for Valentina and Lula. We always keep a little spot for you. Okay, thank you ciao, so much. Bella. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> ciao. Mm-hmm.